What's up scavengers, Anskin Navy here, and today we're taking a look at my Polarakis Lavagata colony, as well as giving their setup a bit of a trip, because as you can see, it's pretty overgrown and messy. But before we start doing that, let's check in on the colony. These guys are, as I said, of the species Polarakis Lavagata, and I'm pretty sure that they have actually reached a fairly mature size. since they have stagnated population-wise, as well as produced a lot of elates. As you can see here, this is a male elate, which you easily can tell apart from the other workers by its extremely small head, as well as it having wings, of course. While checking in the colony, I actually caught a glimpse of the queen, which I haven't done since I introduced them to the setup, I'm pretty sure. So that was definitely a happy surprise. And not even that, I actually caught her doing trophallaxis with one of her workers. A process where the worker regurgitates some of its food stored in its social stomach. As you saw in the beginning, this setup has a dense top foliage. And this colony has actually made use of that by making these hangout areas, or satellite nests kinda, in the dense foliage. They have never moved brood up here, but I see a lot of the elates actually hanging out in these pockets. As you can see, it's pretty dense, and it's in need of a big trimming. I've actually only trimmed this setup once since I constructed it, so this was definitely needed. I started by removing their plates, and oh my god, you can see that a lot of the leaves are yellow and they have been pressed up against the glass, which is something you don't really want since that creates a lot of humidity against the leaf, making it a bit rotten as you can see some of the leaves that we cutting down here. When trimming your setup, you don't just want to go in and cut off whatever plant is in your way, but always keep in mind the sort of style you want to go for. In this case, I enjoyed there being a pretty dense top foliage, but as I said, a lot of the leaves were turning yellow and it was just a bit too dense. Trimming plants like this is also wise if you want them to grow, since cutting away unnecessary leaves and branches focuses the plant's energy on the areas where you want it to grow. As you can see here, this is actually what I was referring to when I was talking about these pockets that they find and hang out in. Whilst trimming, I also found this female elates, or queen. It's always a good sign when you see your colony producing female elates. This means that the colony is reaching a fairly mature size, as well as you knowing that you're actually providing enough resources for them to bring up an entire generation solely for the purpose of reproduction. Which sadly they won't be able to do, since they're captive. And for those of you wondering, no you can't really breed one male and one female from the same colony, that would be pretty awesome, and because of that, I tried, but of course it didn't work. But yeah, always a cool surprise finding female elates in your setups. As you can see here, I simply picked out the already rotten leaves and cleaned it out a bit, making room for new branches and new leaves to grow. Whilst doing this, I actually found a Temnothorax queen crawling around, which I had kind of forgot about that I put in. I like keeping my setups fairly communal with different organisms like springtails and different kinds of isopods, and introducing a Temnothorax queen like this is always fun. Sadly, it didn't really seem like she had found a spot to nest in yet, but I was hoping I could change that. Talking about nests, it was time to remove the Polarakis nests that I had magneted to the glass, so that I didn't accidentally bump into them. The larger nests that I could record in, I didn't remove, since that would probably stress out the colony a bit too much. These small satellite nests that I remove are actually just cork pieces glued together, with a little cavity inside, and they're fastened with magnets to the glass. Tell me in the comments if you want me to make a tutorial on this. They're fairly simple and fun to make. I then proceeded to trim down the ground foliage a lot, since the plant I have here had taken over, but at least they grow well. Alright, as I said, I wanted to include some sort of hardscape for the Temnothorax queen to nest in, so I chose this piece of driftwood that I had found. This would hopefully also create some sort of satellite nesting area for the Polarakis, since I placed driftwood in order for it to actually penetrate the top foliage. I couldn't really call this setup done without adding leaf litter. Always remember to do this if you have a bioactive setup with isopods and springtails, since dry leaves are actually a big part of their diet. Mm -hmm. 
So the ficus tree that I had in this setup had been growing a bit out of hand, so I wanted to control it a bit. So I chose to wire it up using this plastic seal steel wire. I had some of these wires laying around for my bonsai projects, so I used it. When using these wires, however, it's important to keep in mind that you're actually aiming to bend the wire and not the tree, since sometimes you might accidentally break the tree if you're too rough, so be careful. I gave the setup a pig spray down and it was fairly done. I must say, for just spending half a day or so on this setup, it turned out pretty good, especially better from what they had before. I gave them some honey and recorded these close-up shots. And I just gotta say that I love ants. They are so awesome, cute, curious and wonderful critters. Everyone owning them should get some sort of magnification glass or something that you can add in your phone perhaps, because watching your ants really close up really is different and gives you a different appreciation for them. As you can see here, when I recorded their nest entrance, a part of it was moving. I have no idea what this was, and if you know, please tell me in the comments. Arboreal polaracus species usually use silk in order to weave, but I've sadly not seen these guys use a lot of silk compared to a species like polaracus divus. Well, compared to before, this setup was looking a lot better. My hopes are that the big driftwood piece I added would add potential nesting places for the ants. I would also like to mention that I have a shop now, antscandinavia.com where we, among other things, sell ant colonies and isopods, like this Armadillo officinalis. This must be my absolute favorite isopod species, since these guys can actually grow to about 2 centimeters and roll up into a ball when threatened, almost like living marbles. We offer a variety of species, so check it out! Apart from the obvious ant colonies and isopods, we also have nests of different varieties in stock. So please check us out at antscandinavia.com, or by clicking the link in the description. Thank you!